for John Mao. He has to go to the lane. The big lockup has popped the Hoosier. And Mustang Sally is off to the lane. Mate, you've got to get all this broken in the front suspension. Yeah, it's done more than just the tyre. It's smashed away at that right front guard. Actually, that could have been some of the contact he had yesterday, which has done something to the car and, and obviously hasn't shown up until just now. Wow, so that is big in terms of the Touring Car Masters Championship as well, not just this individual race. That certainly would have got his attention, I can tell you. Have a look at this, on the way into the chase. Yeah, uh, something broke. Right front's cooking. Like, he's, he's done a good job to pull it up. But you can see there, it's there. Yeah, there's already. something... No, the tyre's not flat, but he's broken something in the suspension. He's bumping yeah. and jumping around. The a bump in a damper, maybe, or something in the suspension yeah. there. But either way, it's ruined John no, Bow's chances. There's something wrong with the suspension. I wouldn't be worried too much about no, changing the wheel. I don't think it's really going to help, is it? No. So back to the front. Oh, problem here, Jason Gomesall. Slowing at the cutting. And it looks as though Kingy's uh, obviously had a bit of a had a bit of an altercation or something with the, the left front. The domicile's obviously uh, missed a gear or something. And yeah, he's picked it up now and, and ended up with a gearbox full of neutrals. Yeah, he's got it rolling. This is the Tirana that actually Jimmy Stone helped put together. Uh, this is another angle. You can see yeah, the there. See the front wheel? Yeah, it's not going. There's how something it should be. not hooked up there. He's done a good job just to make it around the corner. He's, he's done a great job, you know, and that's where experience comes in. So it gives the lead to... Not a good place for it to happen either. Ah, uh, no, guess. no, there's no such thing as a good place at all, but Greg Crick gets the lead back. Jim Richards in second now from Kim Jane, but that's, uh, that's day done for JB. Well, pretty much, you know, he's not going to... In seven, he's only another four laps to go, so... Yeah, the poor bloke. Greg Crick was right there on the scene to see it all in that Chrysler Charger. There is Crick leading. Jim Richards, second spot. Kim Jane. Next, we jump on board the BXB GT. This is the car that Eddie Abonisa normally drives. Kim jumping in to do double duty. He's running the Utes this weekend as well. And now he's on the back of Jim Richards for second spot. Well, this is where, you know, this is where the, the power of the... The Falcon will come in because he he obviously, uh, Jimmy's only got the very small engine, the 289 engine, so he's obviously going to have a bit of trouble when he gets up the hill. JB's not giving up on this, he's staying on board. There's something else wrong there, though. Yeah. He's going to have to wait and watch, though. Greg Creek was a little wide, actually, on the run to pit straight while we're on board yeah, with Here Tim comes Jane. the Falcon, look out. Here's the power of the XB GT. The Falcon Sprint's light, though. That's it's the great light, thing yes. about it's it. It doesn't have as much power, it's but it's lighter. Power to weight ratio it makes a big difference. Doesn't hurt that it's got JR behind the wheel. <laughs> Seven-time winner of the Bathurst 1000. Yeah, he was part of uh, a lot of the, the Brock wins around here in the... In the, in the uh, 80s, 70s and 80s. Yep, three times in a row. Of course, he won with Mark oh. Scaifor. Look at this drama. Jason Gomez, well, that Tirana did have a fault a lap ago. Obviously, yes. And now it's got a terminal one. I think it's gearbox related by the look of that. It hasn't got anything going. So, another one down on that panorama. Tony Karakolowski here in the that, Mustard Mustang. That is a beautiful car. When you see how it's been built, it's absolutely perfect. Glenn Seaton had a lot to do with the development of this car, Andrew Fisher, right behind him, the Jesus Falcon, back in the category this weekend. And in behind him is Bill Pye in that number seven Camaro, which looks exactly like Bob, Bob Jane. Jane's used yeah. to. <laughs> it's not the Bob Jane Camaro, but could fool me pretty easily. And I think the Jesus Falcon had a problem uh, in one of the earlier races. I think three of them ended up in the, in the sand trap right, right there. there. Yeah, right there at the top of the McPhillamy Park. Bill Pye was involved in that accident. Ah, now John Bow is going to go back out and see how this Mustang will be. Fingers crossed. At the back of this little queue is Cam Tilly in that is giant, killing, pacer? giant killing pacer. He actually was going to drive a, uh, a Monaro this weekend, but had a drama with it, so he swapped back to Old Faithful. Yeah. And he's giving these guys a real hurry up. Oh, I don't think that's JB, any good. JB, that's not going right to go anywhere, pal. Is no good. Yeah. That is the definition of major toe out yeah there's something uh, whoop, it's... I'd park it that's dangerous well you know at least the crew shouldn't have let him out actually there is what remains part of that right front who's here but there's more issues than what went on there with that tire 
will have to take it very gently and take it back to the lane because there's no way. And the reality is you need to do 75% of the race distance to be a classified be a, uh, finisher. As a, as a finisher, yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Uh, it might all be in vain. Anyway, Andrew Fisher a little bit wide here, and this opens the door to Tony Karapolovsky to try to get through. Bill Pine out oh, yeah. down the inside. Because the original Bob Jane car was a seven litre. Yeah, yeah, two time championship winner in yep. uh, 71 and 72 before we had what became Group C regulations come on in. But really, yeah, 60s and 70s, if you didn't have an American muscle V8, you were nowhere. Absolutely nowhere at all. Paul Freestone did that great looking 68 Camaro just up in front there. Gotta love the mix of cars in this. This is fantastic. And a great mix of drivers too from a variety of backgrounds, but the common passion is these cars. The cars are the stars of this category. Absolutely, and, and the thing is that these guys drive them, they drive them so hard. <laughs> Oh, well, you can't drive this one terribly hard at the moment because it's not pointing in a straight line. But John Bowers' experience, he gets out of the way, he knows the deal. This is still on here. Kim Jones keeping the pressure on Jimmy Richards. Jimmy Richards, who the over, the top, yeah. over the top, the Falcon's pretty good. Absolutely. And on the straight, he's got enough to hang on. But Craig Crick still leads the way in the charge. He won a race in the last TCM round at Sandown. But remember, he's been really sick this year. He, he has. was ill after the 12-hour hit earlier in the year where he drove like a star for Erebus and their Mercedes-Benz SLS against Mika Salo, the former Ferrari Formula 1 former driver. One driver yeah. He got cut of an upside poison. It really knocked him around. He missed a lot of racing, but it's great to see him back. He's one of the characters of Aussie racing. And up front, a Charger hasn't won in TCM here at Bathurst before. He might write some history today. Oh, absolutely, because... Originally, all the charges in that were six-cylinder, but this one's got the, the 340 cubic inch V8 in it, and it obviously makes a fair bit of uh, power, to be quite honest. Just a little. This is a good fight. Paul Freestone sits in eight. Andrew oh, Fisher, Fisher goes for the big move. Gets it done. Yep. Nice job. Yep. Whether it's long-lived or not, who knows? <laughs> but JB, there's no way knowing he'd walk back to the pitch, I can tell you, mate. <laughs> Oh, oh Fisher. Fisher's off. Locks the rears. Oh. Keeps it out of the sand, but all that yes. good work has been undone. <laughs> yes. It doesn't take much. And that opens the door now for Bill Pye to attack. Tony Karapolovsky. This is down the tail of the top ten. You can see the uh, dent in the door there in the Camaro. It's not how it should be. No, it isn't. Hey, just quickly, how are you faring today? Two cars for... Wilson Security Racing, Scotty Pye and Ash Walsh, David Wall and Stephen Johnson. How are you faring? How are you looking for today's race? Look, I think uh, the, the track itself has caught a lot of people out uh, over the past few days. And uh, where we're at at the moment is just basically getting a car that uh, you can actually get a balance with because they've been uh, they've been all over the place. And even, even some of the, the stars of V8 supercars have... Have had huge problems, and some of the guys in Touricar Masters have just. Like you got that dead right. Lock the rears. I know we're famous for that. The, yeah. the, old, the XYs and that with the, the leaf springs bouncing around like that in the rear. <laughs> that were bouncing there. Oh, That's for sure. Back to the fight for second spot. Richard still has it. Kim Jane still wants it. I've got to quickly say, hey, in 12 months' time, Marcus Ambrose in a DJR Tim Penske car here at Bathurst. That is a mouth-watering prospect. Well, next year's a learning year, so we'll see where it all goes from there. I know Tim Sidrick from Penske is here this weekend. What, what's his impressions of this race? He's been and seen it all, the Indy 500, the Daytona 500. What's his thoughts? They're super impressed. They really, uh, they really think that uh, this is something that uh, is unique in the world, this particular event. This is pretty unique here too because we've got a fight. Richards has hung on to second the whole way through, but Kim Jane now is launching one last attack because there's only a lap he's to go. Got one lap to go. Yep. They're not getting to Cricky. He's been able to get away. And actually, he's closer this time than he's been for a while too. Just got it a bit wide up over the exit curb. Of course, you'll notice a long pit straight different this year with that catch fence that's been. To the, the roof fences, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they've got roof fences all around the circuit now, which is you know, pretty good, really, because it's 
was getting a little bit dangerous here a couple of times. And also to keep debris from cars and the like yes. away. Look after all concerned here. Is the charger Tenzilli. going down there? The charger was charging. <laughs> Kim Chain hasn't quite got enough to get close enough. And the Falcon Sprint of Jim Richards oh, is good on the stop. Jim's a bit wide there. Here's a chance. And up here is no quite. That's through there is a, a difficult place to pass, I can assure you. It'd take a desperate, it'd take something a bit wild and willing to be able to get on through. Of course, Jim, his son Stephen lines up again today for a, another shot at a bath. There's three wins for Steve, seven for Jim, so it's ten for the Richards clan. And they could add another one today. Of course, Steve teams up with Craig Lowndes for Red Bull Racing Australia. This is not done with you. Kim Jane throwing everything at this. He's a he'll bit wide. A, oh, I think he'll have a real good shot at the end of the straight as long as he gets on Jimmy coming through uh, through Forest Elbow. Off the top for the final time in Touring Car Masters. We've got a great support category lineup ahead of the big race to be a huge the Porsche Carrera Cup. And then of course the big one, the Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. Final time for Touring Car Masters through Forest Elbow. Great trick. I reckon there's going to be a grin in that helmet right now. <laughs> I think that uh, Kim Jane will be doing everything he can when he gets down to the end of here through the chase. Final time down Conrad Strait. Pull top gear over the crest. Here he comes. Here he comes. Down the inside. Jimmy will be there. Gets it done. Now he's got to stop it for the chase. He's using every bit of the engine there too. <laughs> He's got it done though. He's worked his way up to that one and pulled the trigger at the right moment, but it's Greg Crick. The Charger is going to get it done on the mountain. Welcome back to Mount Panorama. Greg Crick picks up the win well, oh, in the fighter race of the weekend. Kim Jane threw everything at it. But a heavy has got to the mountain. For the first time, that's fantastic. Well done, Greg Crick. Three different race winners from the three races for the weekend. Touring Car Masters, great variety. Andrew Fisher trying to fight back on the final lap. Gets a move on Tony Karafalovsky. Well, I'm glad you can pronounce that. Then. <laughs> it's early in the morning, mate. <laughs> Paul Freestone, Bill Pye, Andrew Fisher, Karafalovsky. Cam Tilly, Kerry McMahon in that repaired Tirana after a crash yesterday. Well done, everybody involved. Touring Car Masters, a fantastic category. Love having it here at Mount Panorama, but well done. Greg Crick, fastest lap of the race, and a race win to round out the weekend. Kim Jane home next from Jimmy Richards, then Keith Kasuki and Mark King. Andrew Fisher routed out the 10. What a day, massive day. Don't go anywhere. More for the mountain when we come back. up to the track before the sun's come up, open the roller doors, uh, the crowd's already on the hill, you know you've got a really long day ahead of you, biggest race of the year, you want to do well, but you know anything can happen on the day. On Sunday morning when you push them out, you, you can feel, you can feel the tension in the air and, and you're just hoping that it's going to be a good day. It's a very long day. I mean, I'm sure everybody's nerves, particularly up until the start of the race, uh, you know, everybody's got the, the jitters, but I think the second the race starts, then you're into it. You don't, you're not nervous from that point on. You're just, you're really just focused, but up until uh, the start of the race, everybody's nervous. Strategy's a great part of the day, and, and you know, you can make the wrong call, but it's about getting it back on track and um, sort of, I suppose, not focusing on what's just happened, but what's ahead, so. Uh, that's certainly part of the fun and, um, and making those calls and being able to adapt quickly to changing, changing race, which we always see at Bathurst. You try and tell yourself it's just another race, but uh, with, with the amount of pressure everyone puts on themselves, it's, it's very difficult. You do get sort of butterflies when you get the call that the car is coming in, but then you have to sort of switch into race mode and just stay nice and calm, keep a level head about you. The attraction of the whole the whole job, I guess, is the is the uh, ability to make difference on the day. You're an integral part of the whole process, and, and the decisions you make can make it or break it. To win Bathurst is is the holy grail, and to get you know a good race result is to 
you know, have a good team that uh, can work under pressure. That's one you remember forever. It's 161 laps, it's, you know, six hour race, a long race, you can always, it's tricky, but you can come back, you know, you play your cards right, you can come back from a lap down and, um, yeah, just never give up. I'm not somebody who's superstitious, but you've got to have a little bit of luck because there's no way you can win this race without that. Gee, it's incredible insight, isn't it? Everyone sees this race from a different angle. Welcome back to race day at the super cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. Drivers, teams and cars are standing by for the all-important final warm-up session. Now, Edwina Bartholomew has joined our team this weekend and she's headed out to get the real Bathurst experience. It is a tradition for so many families to come here and enjoy the weekend in Bathurst. Now, this is the first time you've ever come to the race. Is that right, Charlie? What are your impressions so far? Um... I like the noise of the cars. They're very noisy. Now, who are you going for today? Um, v VIP. Excellent. And you picked a good one, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Did you pick it because they won yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon. And what about you, Isaac? You've been here how many years now? Oh, uh, five. What do you love about coming with your dad every year? Oh, just, um, the Sunday today. Yeah. It's really good. And you both going for the same team? Yeah, both the uh, Triple Eight Craig Lounge. Excellent. All right, wave your flags, wave us out. <laughs> Have a fantastic day. Oh, great work, Eddie. And there's their man, Craig Lowndes, just about to roll out for this all-important warm-up session on a glorious Mount Panorama day. So let's join Neil Crompton and Mark Scaife. Thank you, Mark Beretta. It is a glorious day. There is not a cloud in sight. The exit is now open. Warm-up underway, 20 minutes. Last practice session before the big race gets underway later today. The flags are all but still. Ideal conditions, the temperature's low. Craig Lowndes, we saw the onboard shot there. What a tremendous story. Qualified sixth after the incident in practice six earlier in the day, where his former teammate Warren Luff with a brake failure in the Holden Racing Team Commodore Club at the back of the Red Bull car, the braking area at turn two. That's at the top of the very hill that we're looking at there at the moment. You can see all the smoke around the circuit from the tens of thousands of racing fans that are all around this racetrack. There are more campsites this year. The Bathurst Regional Council and the Federal Government invested heavily in resurfacing the racetrack. There's more safety debris fencing for competitors, officials and spectators. There's more fauna fencing. It's a wonderful scene. Here's the entry list. Jamie Wincup, Paul Dunbrell. What a great job yesterday, Dunbrell, in the Dunlop series. Unfortunately, Tander and Luff will not participate. Holdsworth and Baird, last year's champion, Mark Winterbottom, now with Steve Owen, then Chaz Mostert, who'll start near the rear of the grid today. Todd Kelly, an Englishman, Alex Buncombe, Jason Bright and Andrew Jones, very quick. The Davison brothers together, Fabian Coulthard's quick, Nissan a quick, Rick Kelly and David Russell. Scotty Pye and Ash Walsh for Dick Johnson Racing and Wilson Security. David Wall and Stevie Johnson. Retro livery on the Ford. Perkins, a big name with Cam Waters. He's in the 10. Russell Ingle. Unbelievable number of starts here for the veteran with Tim Blanchard. Scotty McLaughlin, Alex Premer, the Frenchman. Volvo are back. First time since 1998. David Reynolds, Dean Canto, Botolo, Ford Falcon. They'll be at the rear of the grid. The pole man, Shane Van Gisberg and Jonathan Webb, VIP Pet Foods. A wild card entry, car triple one, Ant Pedersen, Andre Heimgartner, the Kiwis. There are a lot of stories up and down this field, Mark Scape. One of the biggest stories is the magnetic attraction of this racetrack. It certainly is, Neil. It's an unbelievable racetrack, isn't it? The most famous racetrack in this part of the world. Some of the very best drivers at this venue have created some of the most historic moments in Australian motorsport. 300 kilometres an hour, the maximum speed. Over 50% of the lap is full throttle. 6.2 k's is the lap distance. The practice record was a 5.9 from Winterbottom, but we saw Coulthard do that 5.6 earlier in the weekend. These are the sectors. Sectors aren't that important now because in qualifying we were looking at the run across the top of the hill and then onto this famous straight, Conrod straight. But this morning, the focus will be on making sure the cars are good race cars. Don't make a mistake. Don't do anything silly in the warm-up. Fill the car with fuel. Give both drivers a feel of that. And this is the championship order that we've looked at with Jamie Winkup. And it's easily lost this point in this race because it is a round of the championship. It's race 30 of 38. We spend the rest of the season focusing on the build towards Sydney Olympic Park at the end of the year. And while everybody wants to win this race, 
you've got to remember where you sit in the championship. There are 300 points on offer, so high stakes. You either get it right, there are points all the way back to the last classified runner, but if you get it wrong here and you don't score, it'll really burn. And for those that have just tuned in, obviously the big news for the weekend, the second or the HRT car number two, Garth Hander and Warren Luff after that big crash up at turn two yesterday, mate. And I've got Garth Hander who should be in his race suit, but is in his civvies, mate. First of all, as a driver, let me get a sense of the disappointment that you have this morning, mate. Oh, look, yeah, obviously had about 20-odd hours to process it now. Obviously, our first thought was to make sure when the crash happened that Luffy was OK um, and, uh, and it's quite great that, that, we, that he is. Um, from then on, it was obviously we're trying to assess whether we could fix the car and then when we found out we couldn't, yeah, you got it. I mean, yesterday I was just pretty numb, you know, I just didn't really feel anything, you know. You don't really know if it's real or not. And then um, this morning when I was laying in bed here, I was in the motorhome here at the track, laying in bed this morning, you can hear everyone warming up and just go... I'm not going to be part of that today, so yeah, it sucks, but it's racing. You know, it's hard to take, but you have to deal with it. Garth, let me ask you, we've seen so many big repairs done at Bathurst over the years, so ultimately what was it that determined that you couldn't repair the car here this weekend? Oh, there's a couple of um, critical bars in the safety structure in the, in the safety cell of the roll cage that um, you'd have to pull a considerable amount of the cage out to replace those safety bars. And um, to do it properly, it's, it's, it's a big, big job, and we probably couldn't do it really properly here at the circuit. Um, so it's disappointing. All the superficial damage at the back we could have fixed easily. But um, those couple of key bars in the, in the cage, we just weren't really able to fix properly here. So uh, it's a real shame. The guys do a fantastic job. Uh, usually they did a great job on, th on Thursday night fixing the car and just a pity we can't be there. All right, mate. Well, you're going to hang around. We're going to get the benefit of your knowledge during the day and we look forward to enjoying that. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Shane Van Gisbergen has the excitement of yesterday's pole lap sunk in and has the reality of starting Australia's great race from pole position hit you yet? Not really. <laughs> yeah, just got warm up this morning, so a few little changes to try and feel it out for a race car, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we feel when we're on the grid. You seem a little nervous, we'll let you get there. Yeah, cheers. Shane Van Gisbergen, he'll start from the pole position. Techno Auto Sports VIP Pet Foods entry. Now we're on board at the Holden Racing Team, Greg Murphy and James Courtney. A fancy combination. They were very quick on Thursday. It's just gone a little sideways for them in, in reading the car as the track conditions have continued to evolve. And I think that'll be one of the things we talk a lot about today when the track warms up, the temperature varies. Maybe we get a shower. I think chasing the cars during the day and being right for the last two or three stints is going to be a very big part of the yarn. Greg Murphy in that car now. We're going to take a break. He's one of eight Kiwis in this field. We'll come back and conclude the warm-up in just a moment. Welcome back to Mount Panorama. It's the warm-up, the final practice session before the great race gets underway for 2014. On screen at the moment, car number 17. This is David Wall and Stephen Johnson sharing the car, celebrating the retro livery of the victory between Dick Johnson and John Bauer back in 1994 in the Ford Falcon. In those days, it was the Shell FAI car. These guys have had a little trouble earlier in the weekend. In fact, two laps into the very first practice session, a tyre failure, David Wall on board, pitched the car at about 200 kilometres an hour off the road, down at the bottom of Conrod, frightened the living daylights out of him, put a lot of damage on the car. It was an awkward start for them. Fastest man at the moment, by the way, is David Reynolds. That's a car that's been repaired. On the right-hand side of your screen, Michael Caruso. They've got retro livery as well, celebrating George Fury's pole position here in the Nissan Bluebird back in 1984. We've got one car in the fast lane, we'll go behind it. Michael Caruso sharing with go, Dean go, Fiore. Go, go, go. Reynolds has done a 2 minutes 7.1. There's Stephen Johnson and his dad, Dick, previous winner of the race. And Stephen presented his dad with a little surprise earlier in the weekend when he also reproduced the same look of the helmet that Dick used back in the day. And uh, I had a couple of... Uh, conversations with Stephen so far this weekend and every time I look at him he's got that look in his eye 